Hello and welcome. My name is Henrietta Burley. I'm the Chief Executive of the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce and I'm joined here today by Sarah Ramsey, Dean of the Birmingham Campus for the University of Law. Over the next 20 minutes or so we're going to get to know a little bit about Sarah, the University of Law, and discuss some of the big topics of the day, access to skills and talents and employer engagement with education. So Sarah, hello. Hi, nice to meet you Henrietta. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, I wondered if you wanted to start by just telling us a little bit about you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am the Dean of the University of Law in Birmingham, as you say. Um, I'm originally from Lancashire, but I married a Brummie. So I think by marriage, I am now wholly integrated into the West Midlands and, and in Birmingham. Um, and I moved down here 20 years ago when we when we opened up the University of Law in Birmingham and we're there in the jewellery quarter. Um, a lot of people don't actually know about us, despite the fact we've been here for so long. So I'm looking forward to sharing a little bit about us. Oh, fantastic. As a fellow adopted Brummie, it is, of course, the best place. <laughs> Do you want to tell us just a few of your favourite things about Birmingham? Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love all our little independents. Um, and again, working in the jewellery quarter, you know, we've got so many great restaurants and bars, you know, I mean, I, I, we, we love the wilderness and folium, great places like that. Uh, and so many fantastic uh, independent shops and businesses springing up there in the jewellery quarter. So it's a great place to be. Fantastic. It is such a hub of sort of independent shopping, hospitality, and of course, jewellery quarter, home of a uh, UK made jewellery here. It's fantastic. Absolutely. I bought my wedding ring from there. So, <laughs> Fab, so you mentioned, of course, University of Law. You've been in Birmingham for quite some time, right in the heart, as you say, in the jewellery quarter, but not everyone knows exactly who you are and what you do. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about the University of Law? Yeah, absolutely. So if we go back, we're really well known in the legal community. So our foundations are really in, in the College of Law, as we were known for very many years. I mean, we started way back in the 1800s training legal professionals with a firm called Gibson and Weldon, but that's a very long time ago. But the College of Law has always been known to the legal community. And in fact, probably, you know, a, a significant number of the legal professionals within Birmingham and the West Midlands will have studied their postgraduate studies at the College of Law. Back in 2006, we were the first independent university institution at that time to get degree awarding powers. And then in 2012, we launched our, our undergraduate programmes and sort of formally became the University of Law at that point. So we're a national university. We have, um, I think, 15 different sites, including our partner university sites that we deliver programmes from. We've also got international reach with hubs in Hong Kong and in Berlin so we're very much a, a global university and traditionally we were law university of law obviously does what it says on the tin but we've really diversified of late we have a business school uh, which started in 2016 and I think what we really want to do now is is make sure that we're strengthening our relationships with businesses in the area as well as the legal community so many of our students whether they do a law degree or a business degree or, or one of our other degrees like criminology for example are not necessarily going to go straight into the legal profession but I think a lot of people recognize that either a law or a business degree or a combination of that is a really great foundation to go into a whole raft of different careers. Fantastic. I, uh, I was particularly pleased to spot that, as you say, you guys were founded in 1876, was it? We were. <laughs> yeah, and I think as a heritage organisation ourselves, 1813, it's always good to meet those who have been able to sort of innovate, adapt and keep developing over the quite literal centuries and that sort of recent expansion into, into business school, as you say, and that wider range of courses. Sounds like it may have opened up some interesting opportunities for engaging with businesses and also for your students as well. Um, one thing that's particularly on our mind at the moment at the Chamber is skills, access to skills and talents. You know, we're, we're hearing a lot from businesses, particularly in the professional services sector and actually particularly in the legal services sector, um, that as we've all come out of lockdown, everyone is suddenly recruiting at the same time. And actually for the professional services sector, things have got really very busy. There's a lot of competition for talent, a lot of uh, talk of our starting salary significantly increasing. Is there a bit of, should we say, friendly competition on trying to poach people for each organisations, et cetera? 
it does feel like that market's really heating up mm -hmm. and a lot of questions being asked about where's that pipeline of talent coming from you know how can we best develop up that next generation so is this something that you're seeing at the university of law at the moment and something that you're involved with perhaps on engaging employers with yeah definitely i mean i mean first of all i would say that i think the degrees that we offer in particular are very much around practical professional uh, real focus on employability you know and teaching our students those skills that we know employers want so we are very much about talking about commercial awareness you know whether it's law students or other students you know understanding what businesses need and how they operate making sure that you know students have got that link into the businesses in the region whether that's through work experience or so lots of different things that we do like business games where you know the local community support our students in that so we are very much about developing those skills and I think the other thing that's really interesting about our demographic of students especially with our undergraduates is that so many of them are local so in the university world you hear a lot about commuter students which basically means they're not living in sort of the typical halls of residence they're living at home they're staying studying in their local area and a lot of them intend to stay in this local area and i think what's really exciting at the moment is because of all the expansion and the developments and and you know the businesses that are moving into birmingham and growing in birmingham i think it's a fantastic time you know for local businesses to be actually looking for those local people who've got that commitment to birmingham and the west midlands absolutely there's a huge amount of talent here isn't there and i know one of the things that again is on our mind as a chamber is actually youth unemployment in birmingham in particular still remains pretty stubbornly high it's come down a bit from its peak uh, during the pandemic but it's still surprisingly high and when you look at all the opportunities out there and businesses looking to recruit there's definitely great opportunities to get how we engage the talent that is here that's perhaps a bit untapped into current students potential students people who are perhaps unemployed in the workplace at the moment uh, and look at how we can really get that, harness that local talent, youngest city in Europe and all of that. Mm. So on that, how exactly are you engaging with businesses at the moment? Are there sort of key things that you're doing when working with employers? Are there key things that you look for for sort of businesses to partner with the University of Law? Yeah, I mean, like I say, traditionally, we've worked very closely with, you know, with the legal community. So, for example, I've always been very involved in Birmingham Law Society. Um, you know, within Birmingham Law Society, we're very much involved in the education and development side, especially targeting young people um, and also really keen on the widening participation aspects of it. So I do a lot of work in the university with our widening participation committee, which is making sure that people are getting access to higher education and coming out the other side of it. And I think where we really like businesses to engage with us is to, you know, come to employer days that we run. Um, we do lots of advertising, you know, on our we have a a job teaser website where all our students can access any vacancies, whether it's sort of vacation schemes, internships, graduate jobs, you know, holiday work, whatever it may be. So we really like businesses uh, to engage with us because we can put those opportunities out to, you know, all our talented students who are, who are looking for those opportunities. And of course, I think a lot of the things we do when we talk about commercial awareness and have people to come in and talk about, that you know a day in a life of or what their business is um, and we're always happy to to have employers come and talk to our students or, or join into those sort of employability days that we run um, also having employers opening up sort of a day for undergraduates to say look come in and we'll do a few hours and this is a tour of our business and this is what we do and what we run and getting the students into that workplace environment i think is really really helpful as well Fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of research, isn't there, on employer engagement, opening up horizons and the whole thing of you can't be what you can't see. So giving people an opportunity to know what those opportunities are and see beyond what might be immediately in front of them on some of those things in the city are definitely uh, really great things for businesses to be involved in. Yeah. So final question to you then, Sarah. Is there anything else that you would like to raise with the local business community? Do you have any final messages for our viewers? Um, I think 
I suppose one of the, the main messages I would give at the moment is that, you know, we've all had a really tough 18 months or so, perhaps even longer, you know, when we're starting to think about uh, how things have been. And, you know, don't underestimate the resilience of the students who have gone through, you know, the past 18 months. So for some of them, it's been half of their undergraduate degree in incredibly difficult situations and yet are still coming out with some really outstanding results. You know, we have some real wealth of talent here in the, in the West Midlands. So I think I think that's the first thing, you know, I think our students having had such a difficult year have really um, shown their perseverance and determination and resilience. And I think that's something businesses should be aware of, definitely. Um, I think the other thing is just in terms of opening up and, you know, us getting back to some kind of normality. And I know we hate to say it, but when when we get there, it's just making sure that we're continuing, like I say, to, to develop those links. And part of the reason why we've we've come on board with the Chamber of Commerce is, like I say, because of our diversification of programmes and because we're really keen to work with the community. So if anybody wants to talk to us about for example, sort of diversity and inclusion and the widening participation agenda, you know, I'm always happy to have those conversations and talk about what's happening, you know, in different sectors to make sure we are giving people opportunities and that we are getting the best talent in there and perhaps not just recruiting on the basis of maybe quite old fashioned ideas about, you know, just academic achievement. I think we all realise that things are a lot wider than that there. And um, I would also say that keep an eye out because next year we are going to be celebrating our 21st birthday uh, in the Jewelry Quarter and we're going to make sure that we have some fabulous party and have people come and see our amazing facilities, uh, which are often uh, available as well for, for local businesses uh, to hire because we do have great facilities here in the Jewelry Quarter. So looking forward to making more connections with other Chamber of Commerce businesses. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Some brilliant calls to action there. You know, never underestimate the resilience of young people who have managed to study on through and continue to progress through the pandemic. The importance of that engagement uh, and also diversity and inclusion and widening access and uh, open invitation there. Get involved in celebrating <laughs> your 21st birthday next year. Absolutely. Thank you so much for a really interesting introduction to you, what you do and those opportunities for businesses to get involved. Now, thank you so much for joining me today. And for those of you watching, remember you can find plenty more news, views and interviews with the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce and our members through our website, www.greaterbirminghamchambers.com, our Twitter account at GRB Ham Chambers, and of course, our Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce YouTube channel, where many of you may be viewing this right now. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>